Coming up on a newscast. Heavy rain advisories are issued across most parts of the nation. The downpour is expected to continue until Thursday morning. The Bank of Korea raises rates by half a percentage point for the first time ever. This comes amid inflation running at a near 24-year high. The nation is experiencing another wave of COVID-19. Authorities recommend a second booster shot for select groups. Infected people are still required to quarantine. Hello and welcome, I'm Daniel Cha. Let's begin with our top story at this hour. Heavy rain continues across South Korea's capital region. Some key roads were closed, causing traffic jams. The main railway station serving the city of Gwangmyeong and a station in Seoul's Kumcheonggu district are both flooded. In Incheon City, where a flood warning has been issued, some houses were inundated. There was a power outage at an apartment complex affecting more than 500 households. Around 30 to 50 millimeters of rain per hour is expected throughout the night in the greater Seoul area and down south in Cholado province. The nation's central bank is raising interest rates by 50 basis points. It's the highest single spike by the BOK and the first time rates are raised three times in a row. Um Jung zooms in on the efforts to bring down inflation. South Korea's central bank has raised its benchmark interest rate by half a percentage point for the first time in history. The decision was made following a monetary policy meeting on Wednesday to raise its key interest rate to 2.25%. The Monetary Policy Board has unanimously decided to raise the key rate by 50 basis points as there is the greater need for preemptive measures to stabilize consumer prices. The 50 basis point increase, the so-called Big Step, is the largest single increase by the Bank of Korea since it implemented interest rates as its primary policy tool in 1999. This also is the first time ever that the bank has adjusted the rate upward three times in three straight meetings. The central bank's main drive for the unprecedented hike is to rein in inflation, running at a near 24-year high, and the bank said it's going to stay above 6 percent for a while. One expert says the rate hike is expected to help stabilize consumer prices. The public's expectation of inflation is growing fast, so the Bank of Korea is signaling the stabilization of prices by raising rates, which can help suppress the rise in consumer prices and wages. She said the rate hike could also help prevent a further weakening of the Korean won. The won has tumbled more than 9 percent against the U.S. dollar this year, taking the exchange rate to a 13-year high. The rate increase also followed U.S. Federal Reserve's aggressive interest rate hike of 0.75 percentage point last month, the sharpest one-time rate hike in nearly 30 years. Amid concerns that interest rates in the U.S. could soon surpass those of South Korea, the bank said it is likely to maintain its tightened monetary policies. It is desirable to gradually raise interest rates by 25 basis points for a while. However, the expert says there could be side effects from the big step. Household and corporate debt have been accumulating since before the COVID-19 pandemic economic crisis. With mounting debt, private spending could go down. Also, it could lead to further polarization of society, as those in low-income groups are likely to be hit harder. The Bank of Korea said it will look for ways to support socially vulnerable groups who are likely to go through greater difficulties due to the rate hike. It will also maintain a 0.25% interest rate for loans to businesses who have suffered losses because of COVID-19. Om ji Arirang News. The Korea Economic Research Institute believes the root cause of the nation's high inflation is excess money injected into the economy during the pandemic and the spike in global raw material prices. Based on the think tank's analysis, raw materials have accounted for almost 43 percent of inflation since the start of the Ukraine war. Before then, the percentage was in the mid-30 range. The growing money supply now accounts for about 18 percent of inflation, almost double the pre-COVID-19 level. As of April, the money supply rose to around 3,700 trillion Korean won, or about 1.8 times the nation's GDP. That's one of the highest ratios in the world. 
Some positive employment figures were seen in June, but compared to a year earlier, the highest number of jobs were added for that period in more than two decades. The service sector has been recovering since distancing measures were lifted. Shenayong helps us look beyond the digits. More people were employed in South Korea this June compared to the previous year. According to Statistics Korea on Wednesday, the employment rate came to 62.9 percent last month, up 1.6 percentage points on year. The total number of workers also increased to some 28.5 million, up about 800,000 from the previous year, which was the largest on-year increase for any June in 22 years. However, the figure was down by 10,000 from May. After hitting 830,000 in March, job growth seemed to pick up in April and May, but the growth slowed on year and actually fell a month in June. One expert pointed out the weakening economic recovery as a reason for the fall. The increases in employment was not only due to the recovery, but uh, increased, increasing uh, government-sponsored jobs. Now, the uh, government-sponsored jobs seem to be continuing to increase, but jobs from the recovery seems to be shrinking because the uh, Korean economic recovery after pandemic seems to be losing some strength in the last month. For the on-year figures, employment has improved for all age groups with those 60 and over seeing the biggest gain. Statistics Korea says that the end of social distancing has led to the rise in employment. Employment in June jumped while unemployment and the economically inactive population decreased due to the transition to normal life and the recovery in jobs that require face-to-face -face services. Among the sectors, health and social welfare services and manufacturing have seen increased employment, while finance and retail saw employment tick down. The experts forecasted that unless the inflation settles and COVID-19 case numbers go down, we will see further reduction in employment gains next month. Shin Ha-young, Arirang News. Local health authorities are rolling out second booster shots for people as young as 18 if they have underlying health conditions. As the nation's daily virus tally rises, it's decided the rule requiring infected people to stay home for a week will remain for now. Song Yoo Jin brings the updates. Starting next Monday, more people in South Korea will be able to roll up their sleeves for a second COVID-19 booster shot. Currently, the shot is only advised for people aged 60 and above, as well as the immunocompromised. But things are about to change as the Central Disaster and Safety Countermeasures Headquarters laid out fresh virus prevention measures Wednesday to prepare the country against a possible resurgence of COVID-19 in the coming months. The effects of the vaccine are waning over time, and the highly transmissible BA5 Omicron subvariant is becoming the dominant strain. The second booster is to prevent COVID-19-related death and symptoms from turning severe. Because people in their 50s and those with underlying health conditions are especially vulnerable to these risks, we decided to roll out second boosters for them. The government will also work to increase vaccination rates at facilities for the disabled and the homeless. In terms of treatment, health officials will secure over 1,000 additional sick beds for critically ill patients. And for those who are receiving treatment at home, they will increase the number of the so-called one-stop COVID-19 treatment centers to 10,000 by the end of this month. These centers provide COVID-19 testing, treatment, and prescriptions all in the same place. Currently, there are about 6,300 of them. At the same time, testing and monitoring of those coming into the country will be strengthened. This is due to more people arriving following the lifting of travel restrictions. A PCR test was required within three days after arrival before, but after the changes, this will be required on the first day. They are also advised to stay home until the result comes out. But some rules will remain as they are for the time being. Although stricter social distancing measures such as number caps and private gatherings will not be imposed, mandatory seven-day quarantine and the indoor mask mandate will stay. 
This comes as South Korea saw 40,266 new infections as of Tuesday midnight. That's more than double the figure reported at the same time last week and is the first time in more than two months that the tally has topped 40,000. There were 12 related deaths and 67 patients reported as being critically ill. Song Yujin, Arirang News. President Yoon Sung-il got his fourth vaccine dose on Wednesday. He encouraged people to get the shots as it will protect them from the risk of severe illness or death even if they get infected. The South Korean leader also reassured people that the government will secure enough COVID-19 treatments. Health authorities are recommending a fourth shot to people 50 and older and those with underlying health conditions as long as it's been at least four months since their last jab. Yoon got his third shot in December. There are new photos showing two North Koreans being sent back to the regime a few years ago, even though they expressed willingness to defect. At the time, they confessed to killing the other crew members on their fishing boat. The UN administration emphasized sending them back was an anti-humanitarian act by the previous government. Kim Bo-kyung has the full story. After South Korea's Unification Ministry on Tuesday released photos of the 2019 deportation of two North Korean fishermen, the incident became even more controversial. In early November 2019, two fishermen were captured near the eastern inter-Korean maritime border and later confessed to killing 16 members of their own crew. South Korea sent them back to the north, saying their will to defect was not sincere and that they were felons. Yet the picture showed how they were unwilling to cross the military demarcation line inside the truth village of Panmunjom while being handed over to North Korean authorities, fearful of what might happen to them. Regarding the photos, the presidential office on Wednesday slammed the previous administration's move to deport them, saying it is an anti-humanitarian crime. If they were forcibly sent to the north, even though they showed their intention to defect, this would be an anti-humanitarian crime and a crime against humanity that violates both international law and the Constitution. The Yoon suk government will fully determine the truth to restore the universal values of freedom and human rights. Meanwhile, lawmakers from the main opposition Democratic Party of Korea argued that the joint governmental investigation could not find sincerity in the fishermen's intention to defect, as there was no consistency between their words and actions. They also added it was for the safety of the public given that they were felons. At the time, the Moon Jae-in administration considered people's safety as the utmost priority and to prevent our people being exposed to a possible threat, it decided to deport them. With the presidential office officially calling the decision anti-humanitarian and the Democratic Party refuting such claims, the controversy over the issue is now more aggravated than ever. Some experts say now eyes will be on whether a legitimate process was taken after the fishermen had shown their will to defect. Kim bo Arirang News. North Korea appears to have fired an artillery round toward the West Sea. South's military detected a single projectile believed to be an artillery round on Monday, just a day after Pyongyang reportedly fired two rounds. This comes at a time when six U.S. F-35A jets are in South Korea for joint military drills. It is the first time in almost five years Washington deployed the stealth fighters to the peninsula. South Korea is closely monitoring the Hermit Kingdom's activities and maintaining a firm readiness posture. North Korea appears to be producing plutonium for nuclear weapons at its Yongbyon Nuclear Center. According to 38 North, cooling water was seen discharged there in May, June and July. And commercial satellite imagery shows faint smoke coming out of the center's thermal plant. The U.S. space website mentioned although additional monitoring is needed, this could mean preparations are being made for some type of nuclear activity in the near future or that the regime is treating radioactive waste. The most recent time smoke was seen from the facility was in last July. The UN administration is expected to take a different approach to North Korea compared to the previous government. A debate on the subject was held by some high-profile current and former officials at the Korea Peninsula Future Forum. Han Sung shares with us what was discussed. How must South Korea reset its North Korea policy? That is the question the Korean Peninsula Future Forum put 
to distinguished panelists at its fourth open debate in Seoul on Wednesday. And the word change was a recurring theme. Now is the time to search for a way to change Kim Jong-un's oppressive regime, to stand by the suppressed North Korean people and to ease their pain, even if it's just a little. Host and former second vice foreign minister An Chong-gi opened by stressing that times have changed and that North Korea has effectively become a nuclear power. He also brought up the shifting political climate in Asia, characterized by heightening tensions between the United States and China, each eager to establish their authority in the region, and said that South Korea can no longer sit on the fence between the two countries. One of the most high-profile debaters in attendance was People Power Party lawmaker Taeyong ho who prior to defecting in 2016 served as North Korea's deputy ambassador to the United Kingdom. Tae voiced the need to offer the regime virus relief preemptively by negotiating with the U.S. to ease sanctions imposed on the regime. North Korea lacks infrastructure to carry out inoculations, so one thing South Korea could do is provide the regime with cold chain systems or fuel for electricity. A KPFF researcher, meanwhile, emphasized the need for North Koreans to have access to more and more information on the outside world through media so they can change their own fate for the better. It's only been two months that South Korean President Yoon song yeol took office, but North Korea has already presented his administration a long list of concerns. To remaining unresponsive to offers of COVID-19 aid, to ballistic missile launches, and now even the looming threat of another nuclear test, making North Korea policy one of, if not the most important item on the Yoon song yeol administration's five-year agenda. Han Sung-woo, Arirang News. As Moscow continues to take hold of eastern Ukraine, Kyiv launched long-range rockets toward Russian forces in its southern region. This comes after the U.S. supplied the country with advanced high Mars rocket systems, a high-tech lightweight rocket launcher that can hit targets at a range of 80 kilometers with precision. Ukraine's military said the strike killed 52 people and destroyed an ammunition store. But a Russian news agency reported that seven people had been killed and around 70 injured. Meanwhile, the EU has approved 1 billion euros of financial aid to Ukraine as member states face growing economic damage from Moscow's invasion. The Jeju Forum is held for the first time in three years. Government officials, business leaders and scholars gather to trash out the latest economic challenges in Korea and beyond. Ideon brings the highlights from the 45th edition of this meeting. On Wednesday, over 600 government officials, business leaders and scholars descended on Korea's southern Jeju Island for the 45th Jeju Forum. Because of the pandemic, it's being held for the first time in three years. The theme of this year's forum is insight and healing from Jeju Island. At the opening ceremony, the chairman of the Korea Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Choi Tae-won, who is also the billionaire chairman of SK Group, urged business leaders to think flexibly. This year's Jeju Forum aims to provide participants an opportunity for a eureka moment that will give rise to new thinking and flexibility. As the first speaker, Finance Minister Chu kyung ho elaborated on the Yoon administration's measures to ramp up economic growth amid global supply chain issues and high inflation. The government should interfere less with the market and instead encourage companies to work hard, let them pay taxes and increase the employment rate. So the administration aims to boost private-led growth. The economic crisis is likely to last for a long time, but I promise that the government will help companies get through it. Insightful advice on geopolitical and economic risks was given by overseas experts, too. Adam Tooze, a professor at Columbia University, said post-war liberal order is being challenged by global economic risks, China's dramatic growth, and the climate crisis. He also said it's important to build cooperation between Korea and the EU in a new paradigm where the U.S. and China are competing to dominate the global supply chain.
After three years of the pandemic, KCCI wants to prepare a red carpet for this year for participants. The three-day event will run through Friday, providing lectures and activities on a wide range of topics, including global economic uncertainties, the new government's financial policies, and the future of digital human technology. Lee Dae-hyun, Arirang News, Jeju. Earlier this month, Junha became the first person of Korean descent to win the Fields Medal, the world's highest honor for young mathematicians. The Princeton professor gave a speech at the Korea Institute for Advanced Study in Seoul. Yi Xiu tells us more. Jun Ha, a Princeton University professor of Korean descent, was awarded the prestigious Fields Medal earlier this month. Awarded every four years by the International Mathematical Union, it's given to high-achieving mathematicians under the age of 40. And on Wednesday, the 39-year-old mathematician met with reporters at the Korea Institute for Advanced Study in Seoul. At the press conference, Ha explained why the speech he was going to give was called Boundaries and Relationship. I pondered what topic non-mathematicians would understand and find meaningful, so I chose to speak about emotions I have, as mathematician, about the two words. And for students and how they can persevere and find their passion, Ha said the key is self-encouragement. When things aren't working out too well, I hope you can keep a pure heart, have patience and give yourself time. If you give yourself some subtle encouragement, I think you'll get good results. In his lecture, Ha elaborated on his thoughts as a mathematician using friendly metaphors comparing mathematics to a game he played as a child, tracing words through the dictionary. He also compared it to a picture of deep space. This picture shows the sheer scale of our universe. Each and every shining dot is a galaxy. There seems to be some kind of geometric structure here. Each of these shining things here could be a conjecture. After, Professor Kim Young-hoon of Seoul National University, who was previously Ha's teacher there, explained the significance of his academic contributions. Ha was awarded the Fields Medal for his profound insights connecting two areas of mathematics, combinatorics and geometry. Combinatorics is an area of mathematics primarily concerned with counting, while geometry studies the properties of shapes and spaces. Ha solved central problems that had remained open for decades called Reed's Conjecture and developed a theory of great importance for both fields. According to the International Mathematical Union, Ha was recognized for bringing the ideas of Ha's theory to combinatorics, also for proving the heron rota welsh conjecture for matroids, proving the strong Mason conjecture, developing the theory of Lorentzian polynomials, and more. His findings have real-life applications in fields such as IT, semiconductor design, transportation, and machine learning. Ha will go on a family trip next week before beginning his summer research at Korea Institute for Advanced Study. Lee si Arirang News. Torrential rainfall will be pounding much of South Korea for the rest of the night. Northern central regions will see the most amount of rainfall with up to 150 millimeters. Central regions, Jeollado and Gyeongsangbuk-do provinces will see 30 to 100 millimeters. Most of the rain will slowly taper off by early tomorrow morning. Bands of heavy rain will batter parts of central regions overnight. That includes the capital region as well. A group of heavy rain clouds will produce locally heavy downpours of 30 to 50 millimeters per hour. Also, landslide warnings across central regions have been raised to level watch. Please take extra precautions against possible landslides and even flooding, especially those near low-lying areas. Morning lows in Seoul and Chuncheon will start off at 24 degrees Celsius. Sweltering conditions will return for the daytime. Seoul will be reaching 31 degrees, Gwangju 32, Daegu will be hot at 34 degrees. After the monsoon rains, scattered outbreaks of rain are in the forecast for inland regions. Parts of the south will see rainy spells until early next week. That's all for now, and here are the weather conditions around the world.
It's time to wrap things up. As always, thank you for staying with us.